fun well, and just to dip, you know, it's a great challenge, a lot of consistency over the years. They've got good, you know, we talked about the veteran players that they have had that have been uh, very productive for them over the years. And so uh, I think just having the same scheme has allowed them to um, really develop within that and, and have their own little wrinkles and uh, whether it's, you know, Davis inside, Cam Jordan, Lattimore, um, you know, obviously the, the secondary and the safeties just allows them to, um, you know, expand and, and make things look different, disguise and how they how they end up operating. So it's going to be a huge challenge. How did your captains go, end up going? And what do you think about the, the group? Well, the, uh, the, the team voted offensively. Uh, Ryan, um, Derek. Uh, Aaron Brewer, uh, defensively, they voted uh, Kevin Byard, Jeffrey Simmons, and Aziz Al Shair, and the special teams voted uh, Morgan Cox. So, probably a few more than what we've had, but there was a clear uh, line of uh, demarcation there, and so that's why we felt to, to to go in that direction. I know you probably got a lot of the guys who could have been captains, but as far as that leadership group. How do, you, how do you like that group as a whole? And then what maybe are the responsibilities for those guys as captains? Well, first of all, I would always tell you, and I told the team that, you know, I don't want to put, or the team doesn't want to put any restrictions on leadership. By that I mean, you know, everybody's got the opportunity to lead uh, how they see fit. You know, if there's somebody that does their job and comes in on um, ready to work and, you know, they have an opportunity to lead somebody. Um, that particular group, you know, Kevin's been here a while and has been consistent, um, you know, in our defense and our secondary, uh, Jeffrey, the impact that he makes and then Aziz, you know, being a guy that's come in, you know, in the off season through free agency and has really shown a propensity to, to be here every day, be locked in, communicate. Same thing offensively with, you know, Ryan and Derek and then, you know, Brew, I would put him in the kind of the category of Aziz, you know, even though he's been here, but having that opportunity to, to try to lead that offensive line and, and help them. What did you see out of Pierre Jackson all through the preseason that gave you the confidence that he could handle the punt and kick return job? Well, I think at some point in time, Kier's decided to, to be coached and to – work each day and improve and, and change some you know behavior and, and learn multiple positions and then also um, be consistent catching the football and taking advantage of his opportunities. What did you have to say to him during his initial reluctance maybe to get him out of that mode? Well, I mean, it's just, I don't, it's not negative. I don't want to mean it as negative. It's just that, you know, guys that are conscientious that that show up um, want to always do the right thing and, and understand that we understand that there's going to be mistakes and maybe how they they coached it at Georgia or how he learned it or how he thought it um, maybe wasn't in line with what we you know were looking for so again it's just about not making excuses and just having accountability and saying yep that has to be better or I I see it or whatever it may be, and you know, he, he did a nice job. Coach, you mentioned the challenge the Saints defense brings offensively, some new pieces, including their new quarterback, Derek Carr. How would you describe the challenge they present to your defense? Well, I think that, you know, obviously with, with Olave, Michael Thomas, two different receivers, one extremely quick, great route runner. Michael Thomas, you know, is a, is a He's a great route runner in his own right, but it's just the physicality, the, the, the play strength that he has. Uh, Jawan Johnson, it's a veteran offensive line with a you know, couple new pieces there. But for the most part, you know, you look back a couple years and that's been the same group that it's been. You know, last time we played them a couple years ago uh, with the addition of Penning. You know, they've got, you know, some, some tight ends and how they use Hill. You know, we'll see what Derek Carr and, and, and how he operates, but you know, when, the, when this, this offensive system that they've had in place for a while, when they are at their best, there's, a, there's an urgency, there's a pace to it. And, and I don't mean no huddle. 
but there's a, is there's an operation that that's fast that gets out of a huddle that motions that uh, there's just you know when the ball's getting out of the hand of the quarterback and it's getting into the playmakers and how about a guy like Jawan Johnson maybe incorporating Taysom Hill a little bit too just the way that they've done that in the past with their offense well, we'll have to be ready for a lot of different things and have to you know get lined up and know who's in the football game and know where they're lined up at you know not only us and our communication but finding out where they're at um, you know so there'll there'll be things that we'll have seen from from tape and there'll be things that we haven't seen you know, he's a guy sometimes he'll travel sometimes he plays side whatever but what is it that you feel uh, makes him such an outstanding player? Well, he's got talent. He's got competitiveness. He's got play strength, and, and he challenges. And you know that's the thing when he you know, when he gives up a play, he comes right back, and you know he gets lined up again and, and continues to challenge and, and, and come back at you. And you know he he can run. He can flip his hips. You know he can play off. He can play press. So there's a lot of different things that he can do, and he's done it for a lot of years. Seen Tajay do to this point to earn the trust of coaches and, and, and teammates alike. Well, I think it, there was a time in Minnesota where, during practice, Tajay stepped up and you know met a linebacker right in the hole, uh, just from the different looks that they gave us and. You know, I pointed it out to the team and every, you know, the defensive guys were like, oh, you kind of hear him talking. And that was the reaction I kind of expected you know, when I showed the tape or the play to the, to the team and knowing that the offensive players would have seen it or had seen it, uh, but the defensive players did it. And I said, that's the way that a young running back earns the respect of his teammates is that they are able to protect the guy with the ball and not just do what they do with the ball. You know, we, we've seen examples of him you know, making plays with the football in his hand, but it's how you play uh, without the football that I think really guys appreciate, or certainly I appreciate. When the offense was first being installed, the guys first got here, the word they were quickly using was tempo. <laughs> they they were, seemed surprised by the, the tempo, or that was the biggest adjustment for them. How much do you think that that's kind of uh, something now that, that's uh, – in the back. I mean, we've always tried to play with urgency. We've always tried to get to the line of scrimmage. We've always tried to have those things and, you know, continue to make an emphasis on it. And I think that the more that you learn it, um, one, it allows you to, to play quicker. And maybe when you know something so well that you kind of take it for granted, right? So when you have this new learning, new terminology, the things that we've added, um, you know, you're on high alert, you're on edge, and so maybe that's part of it. But I hope that we, you know, since we've been here, never played lackadaisical, but maybe that's kind of what it is. What have you seen from Sam's in the Hey, world? buddy, I haven't heard from you in a while. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, welcome back. Okay. Oh, really? You sound surprised. <laughs> Has it been that long? I try to let cars get more questions. Uh, but yeah, what have you seen from, what have you seen from uh, Tim in this role? I mean, since he's been here, or I've been around Tim. There's been a you know great energy, you know, a passion for teaching, um, a, a passion for uh, explanation, finding new ways to to teach, and you know that's been really cool seeing you know him and Justin and Charles uh, uh, work you know together, uh, building plays, building terminology, building installation, um, and, and so hopefully it can. Can, can all help our players. But, you know, I think Tim has a great relationship with the players and he you know, has the ability to, to push them, to challenge them, but also, you know, to teach them and explain to them. In your travels around the league, is that arena one of the, the louder ones that, that you can remember visiting? Um, yeah, I mean, any dome and, and certainly uh, opening week in New Orleans and, I mean, they have a passionate fan base and, you know, anytime you play indoors, um, you, you have to be you know conscious of that, and certainly on opening week. And how much does that factor into your preparation as far as that nonverbal contact that, that you have to have? Well, it will be uh, a large part of what we do. I mean, a large part of how we prepare, knowing that uh, you know the road environment um, 
is, is something that we're going to have to handle um, early in the game based on the success that we have. And, you know, third down, uh, making sure that you know, we're in and out of the huddle, that we're, uh, quarterbacks, you know, putting the protection where he wants it and then being able to adjust to it. And, you know, the line and punt team, you know, I mean, showed the team this morning about, you know, Tampa last year, their second week of the season. You know, guys on the punt team are, are late reacting to, to the snap. And, you know, they get on a guy's edge on the, on the right side there and, you know, didn't get blocked. But it was, you know, a point that we made that, you know, even guys on the punt team have to have to be able to perif the ball and be able to get get back and get set and not let those guys get on their edges. They they come after punts and they come after field goals. Mike, in your experience as a head coach, is, is there anything about getting your guys ready for week one that's different than getting them ready for any other week? Uh, just an emphasis on fundamentals, emphasis on, you know, we can all say they're going to do this and they're going to do that and, you know, pull stuff out of the sky. But really, we don't know. We, we have no idea. We have to go down there and, um, you know, play play sound, play fundamentally sound, play play with great effort. Um, you know, being able to get back to center, they hit a play, knowing hey, whatever we see early, you know, they're probably going to come back to later on and figure out if there's some wrinkles that that we'll have to adjust to and being being great uh, recognizing things and um, you know, not trying to you know, say, hey, this is what they're going to do. Because we may have an idea, even defensively, since there's been some consistency over the years. But you know, they'll, I'm sure they'll have some things that we haven't seen as well. As a leader early, is that rare in your experience for somebody to be able, able to come into a veteran room and kind of establish as a leader early? Well, I wouldn't say that the room that he came into was much. Sorry. Yeah. Um, mm, I mean, I think it just depends on each player, you know, and their personality and the impact that they want to make and, you know, how, how they fit into the entire room, which, you know, it's been a great, you know, great addition. How do you feel like Brewer has been taking command of that offensive line? Again, I think that Brew is, you know, the one thing that, you know, we've all been around Ben Jones and Ben was here for a lot of years and made an unbelievable impact on our team and organization, but, um, Brew had to you know, try to lead differently than Ben. I mean, they're different people, different personalities, uh, but have seen a uh, an energized and professionalism to them. And you know, coming in early, extra meetings, uh, his communication with the quarterback and the rest of the line has, has been where we wanted it to be. This is a good litmus test for your defense with all the emphasis on preventing X plays to go against two very good receivers and a quarterback like Carr who's not shy about airing it out and putting balls downfield. You said, is this a good test? Oh, test sure. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, we just have to make sure that we don't get the ball thrown over our head. We also have to make sure that you're, you know, tackling it when they catch it. They're, the guys can – can operate in space after the catch. I mean, Olave, if you, you know, don't break down or don't tackle him, you know, can turn and just like he did last year, you know, against the Panthers, took it, you know, an eight yard pass and turned over his outside shoulder and it was a 30 yard touchdown. So um, not only, you know, being great down the field, but also being able to come and tackle uh, when those guys have it. Feels good about your ability to rush the passer after training camp going into week one. I hope so. We've invested a lot of resources there, so we better. Will Arden practice? Um, yeah, I would anticipate Arden being out there today at some capacity. Good, good. Appreciate it. Uh, there's a lot in that question, but um, you know, every everything is. Uh, well, in that in that situation is, is a new experience, right? So you're you're learning a lot along the way, um, learning a lot of new teammates. Could be a new offense, new city, new organization. But um, you know, I can't speak for Derek. For me, I, I came in and just try to do my job each and every day and, and prepare myself to to go win games. What do you feel like the readiness level is for this offense going into the into the opener? I'm excited. I'm excited about um, the work we've put in up to this point. Excited about. Uh, where our guys are out and, and the confidence we have going into this game. Uh, now it's a matter of, of making the transition from doing it in practice to, to go doing it in games that, that count. Can you quantify the difference for you in this offense in terms of even 
like calling more protections and having more options available to you pre-snap a different play like how different is that for you in this offense uh it's a little bit different than than the last offense obviously um you know some some new concepts some new protections new um ideas that, that we haven't had in the past so um that's been a fun process for me of of getting on board with those and and making those part of of what we do and and um owning them so um Happy with, with how things have gone throughout training camp and excited to transition it into the season. We talk about as an individual. Has anything changed like, as far as your approach and your mindset entering this season where you are in this career? No, I'm, I'm excited to, to go attack this season. Um, you know, we have an opportunity to, to get this thing going the right way. So, you know, that's my mindset right now is do everything I can this week to, to go in this game and, um, you know, keep doing that as the weeks roll by and we'll be in good shape. Like at all, like a future is now kind of approach for knowing everything that's at stake for you. Uh, I mean, obviously it matters, right? It matters that no matter where you're at in, in your your uh, career. So um, you got to take advantage of your opportunities when they come, and, and we know that this is a big opportunity and a big opportunity for myself. You and a lot of guys on offense talked about the tempo when when you first saw the new offense there was a lot of talk about the tempo how how has that translated through all of this how do you think it translates into what you guys do going going forward uh, tempo is a part of what we do um you know it's something that we can can use to, to try to create an advantage uh, get the defense on their heels go in and out of it um you know we'll see how much we end up using it uh, this week and, and and following weeks but uh, it's definitely a tool that we like to keep in our back pocket and be able to use Earlier you mentioned building confidence with your teammates. What do you do to build that? Where does that come from? Uh, through reps. I mean, primarily is, is through reps, whether I'm, I'm in the rep myself or, or watching it and when another QB is in there, you know, just seeing guys execute, um, you know, repeated success, right? You see seeing patterns and, and guys doing the right thing over and over, making plays over and over again, and that, that confidence grows, you know. Um, whether it's tight coverage and the guy's making a contested catch, that gives you the confidence to throw in those tight windows and, and be able to trust your guy to go make a play or um, you know, a pre-snap read of, hey, this guy's one-on-one -on -one backside. He's been winning one-on-one -on -one backside, so you know, let's, uh, let's give him a chance. You know, so all those types of things. Is with receivers when you have new linemen, or is it kind of the same principle? Well, that's the same principle. My eyes aren't necessarily on them during the play, but um, you know, whenever you have some clean pockets, you start stacking clean pockets and are able to throw and um, and be on your two feet and not get knocked down or, or hit and tackled or sacked, then uh, you know that confidence grows in the offensive line that um, you're going to have a time to, to get the ball off cleanly. How much do guys like uh, Tajay and Chig help you be more creative when you're in like 21 personnel or 13 personnel that are normally kind of conservative packages? Yeah, they're talented guys. Excited to to have both those guys on our our team. Uh, when you have those those matchup guys and you can put them in in multiple personnels um, kind of spread across whether it's 21 or 12 or, or whatever the case may be um, definitely gives you more avenues of attacking the defense and, and put pressure on them Have you, or will you talk to, to Malik and will about how life changes now in those roles and how how few snaps there are available in the scout team role and how how making an impression is might be a lot harder during these weeks when the team's getting ready for games. Yeah, it wasn't a conversation that I led, but um, conversation in the QB room about how you know we're, we're getting ready to, to go into um, preparing to win games and, and not so much development, you know. So uh, how those roles change and being able to take advantage of the reps that come uh, whenever they do come. Uh, it's it's more challenging this time of year, obviously, but um, definitely crucial to, to keep going down that path to develop. Like preparing for a week one opponent where you know what they've done in the past, but you also know you could see some things you've never seen before. And can you drive yourself crazy kind of preparing too much? A week one's definitely a, a wild game. Every every year it's like this. You know, you have so much time to prepare. Uh, you never really know what they're going to throw at you. They've had all off season to, to kind of scheme up something and, um, and try to hit you with it, you know. So... Um, you never really know exactly what you're going to get. Obviously, you have an idea, but there's always some, some wild cards thrown in. From a noise perspective, you know, that's a pretty loud place. How much does that change you know, what you and the receivers do, or tight ends, et cetera, to make sure you're on the same page and able to talk without actually talking? Yeah, it's huge. You, know, you go into a, an environment like this, it's going to be hostile, it's going to be loud. 
Uh, communication is going to be key, whether it's uh, in the huddle, outside of the huddle, the offensive line, at the line of scrimmage, myself to the offensive line, at the line of scrimmage, myself and the receivers. It's all huge and, and paramount that we were able to, to be on the same page no matter what the situation is. So uh, definitely loud environments make that tough, and we have to work that. We started working that in practice. Uh, it's tough to simulate that in practice with just how loud it gets in a, in a place like uh, New Orleans. But uh, we're doing the best we can to simulate it and, and making sure that we can be on the same page and ready to go. Yeah, Peter Steady Eddie, man. He comes in, he comes to work each and every day uh, and does his job. You know, I can think back to uh, to spring just watching some one on one reps with him and Jeff, you know, kind of battling and out. And, um, you know, you watch those reps and you kind of get a good feeling in your gut, you know, and you, as you see, um, training camp go on. He's just steady. He, he's out here. He's, he's improving. He's working hard each and every day and doing exactly what we asked him to. Right. The Saints defense has been pretty good at getting after quarterbacks the last several years. What's the biggest concern or two you have facing them and facing their ability to put pressure on you? Yeah, they have they have a good rush, man. They, they do a good job um, not only with, with their edge rushers and the talent they have, but then using the games and, and stunts inside to, to create pressure on the offensive line. So um, we have to be on top of that, have to be on the same page offensively. Obviously, Cam Jordan uh, has been around for a long time, doing an extremely high level. Demario Davis in the middle kind of runs the show. You know, he's he's uh, in the backfield. He's he's making plays down the field. He's all over the place. So I have a ton of respect for those guys and and this defense. And um, it's going to be key that we can you know give ourselves some time to to get the pass off. You've been in a lot of different locker rooms in your career in terms of what you guys did last year, mm -hmm. roster turnover, expectations, different things. Where does this locker room kind of fall in line with? your career experience of confidence and expectations heading into week one? Yeah, I'm not going to rank anything here, but uh, you know, excited about where this team's at. Uh, obviously, there's always an excitement going into week one, and, and uh, now it's a matter of, of making it happen. You know, every, every team in the league has an opportunity to, to go execute their goals and, and um, reach what they want to reach. But you know, only really one team does that. You know? So it's a matter of, of finding a way week in and week out to, to stay true to what we believe in, um, how we do it, preparing ourselves, and, and coming together as a team. You know, we really see, you know, I like, I like the energy we have, the, the camaraderie we have, but you really find out what your team's about once you start playing games and, and go through some adversity. So um, excited to, uh, to be able to kick things off this week. How are you to uh, finally get the throw to DeAndre in something that means something? I'm excited, man. It's been a lot of fun getting to know him over the course of training camp. Um, you know, a ton of reps out here on the practice field. So he's been working hard. He's been practicing each and every day, which is huge, uh, and just building that trust and that chemistry with me. And um, you know, I'm loving what I'm seeing so far. Now it's just a matter of, of doing it on Sundays. You guys struggled Ryan last year in the second half, so lost four points. How much you know, has that, that been emphasized? You know, throughout the offseason, throughout training camp, maybe. Not only getting off the quick starts, which you guys did pretty well, but for that second half as well. Uh, it's just consistency. You know, I, I don't think it's uh, you know something we harped on or anything like that, but uh, we just want to be consistent. We want to go out, be able to start fast, put points up early, and then play consistent throughout games. You know, there's going to be ebbs and flows throughout games over the course of the season, and it's just a matter of, of being able to, to get out of those funks whenever they happen. You know, every offense, every team has them at some point. You know, it's just a matter of, Acknowledging it and not being satisfied with where it's at, being able to get something going the next drive. Um, did you by chance uh, watch the, the college game that was played at Nissan the other day? Just wondering if you got any feedback on our field conditions or, or anything like no, that. No, I didn't. Sorry, I missed out on that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Ron.